By the end of this video, you will be able to make your player move and jump exactly like this. Hey guys, Blakey here and welcome back to another video. Today I have a short tutorial for you guys. It's going to be on a player movement script to make a cube or any object move left and right and jump. Nice and easy. It's a nice easy script to do. There's a few things we've got to do to make this functional. So first obviously I've got on the scene I've got a very simple just a little cube and a floor. Now for this to work if you're a complete beginner what you need for the player you need to add a component the two components you need to add are a rigid body 2d and a box collider 2d you don't really need to change anything else the one thing that i would maybe recommend changing is on rigid body 2d change the collision detection to continuous because it just makes uh when it collides there's no weird glitches and stuff that can tend to happen and finally on your floor make sure you add a box collider and if you need to edit it Go ahead and press edit collider and you can alter it from there okay the next thing we're going to do if you if you see we go and press play it's going to fall but there's no movement i'm hitting my keys i'm uh, i'm pressing jump nothing is happening because we need to go ahead and make a script for that so i'm going to go into this script folder i made and i'm going to press create c sharp script we're just going to call this player movement just like that go ahead and open it up in visual studio Okay guys, and now Visual Studio has all loaded up, there's a few things we've got to do. So we're going to assign a few variables first hand. So we're going to be assigning a public float called speed. So this is going to be for the player movement. Oh, let me go ahead and, uh, go ahead and put a semicolon on the end of that. So this is going to be for changing our speed. We've made it public so we can alter it in the scene without having to hard code it. Uh, the next we're going to do is public float again for jump. Go ahead and that will automatically be set to zero because we haven't assigned it just yet but we're going to be doing that in unity okay and now we need to assign a private float called move so without this there would be no movement at all so obviously that is needed and finally we're going to be accessing our rigid body rigid body to d and we're just going to call that rb for short Okay, so these are all the things that we have assigned. We won't, we uh, aren't going to need anything else for the basic script that we have. Uh, the first thing we're going to do, we're going to go into our start function here, and we're going to set our RB to get component. Uh, go ahead and use your arrows to assign the rigid body 2D just like that. Put a double bracket and a semicolon to close it off. So now we've assigned. Whenever we use our RB, it will be referring to the rigid body component on our player. Uh, but that will only happen once we attach the script to the player later on. So now, in our update function, we are going to go move equals input dot get axis. Now, there are two ways you can do this. If you want smoother movement, you use get axis on its own. But if you want quite sharp movement, you're going to use get axis raw. I'm going to show you guys both. Uh, so we're going to be using raw to start with, and then two brackets. Uh, and then the quotations and we're going to be putting horizontal now the reason we use horizontal is because our game is 2d and for move this is to this is to move left and right which is obviously horizontal so we put that if we was doing it for vertical we'd obviously put vertical but we're going to be using a different way for jumping so the first thing we're going to do now well not the first thing we've obviously done quite a few things already uh, but in the next thing we're going to do is do rb dot velocity and we're going to make that equal to a new vector 2 so a vector 2 is just a 2D movement. If we was using 3D, it would tend to uh, you tend to use vector 3 a lot more. And then we're going to times our move, which we assigned at the top here as a float. We're going to times that by our speed, which we also assigned, as well as our rb.velocity.y. Go ahead and put a semicolon on the end of that. And now this should be working for moving left and right. So if we go into Unity, and before we do anything, this would not work right now because we need to go ahead and drag our script to the player. And now you can see we've got two variables. So I'm gonna set the speed to five and I'm gonna set the jump to 300. So the reason the jump is so high, for some reason it's weird that you can't, you can't uh, make the speed and jump similar because they don't have the uh, similar values. I don't really know why. 
but you know just try uh, mess around with the numbers it's going to be different for everyone and now if we move left and right you can see we have some movement so the jump speed is not assigned yet we haven't made a script for jumping so your jump will not be working but we're going to get to that shortly but you can see we're moving left and right and as you can see the movement is also very very sharp so we're going to go ahead and jump straight back into visual studios and we're going to do an if statement now so if we go if input dot get button down so we use this when we're accessing a certain button on the keyboard and uh, we're going to type in jump unity has jump automatically set to the space bar so that is what we want and then we're going to go ahead and put a semicolon on the end of this oh no we are not sorry uh, we're going to put curly brackets just like that uh yes that is correct and we're going to do rb dot add force just like that and then a new vector to rb dot velocity dot x as well as our jump okay guys and that should be right if we go straight back into unity we have now assigned our jump so we go ahead and press play and we hit the jump we do have a nice jump so we've got moving left right and a nice jump so you can change a lot of these uh the weight of your player and the linear drag and the gravity all on your rigid body so if you wanted it to be a much harder fall you'd increase the gravity if you wanted there to be less acceleration in the air you'd use uh, linear drag you'd increase or decrease that or decrease the mass and yeah that's pretty much it the one more thing i want to show you is if we get rid of this raw and just leave it to get axes you're going to see a lot smoother movement um it is going to be it basically differs for your game everybody has different but now you can see movement is a lot sharper and when we're in the air it turns a lot uh, less which is more realistic if you're making a game about cubes and it's uh, very like blocky based you might want to have get access raw but now that is everything guys that i'm going to showcase i this is pretty this is a very very basic script but at the same time, it's very easy to learn and it's probably one of the first first things you're going to learn when uh, working on 2D games in Unity. So I will thank you very much for watching and I will see you in the next video. Bye.